Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this one of a kind headphone stand, mainly because I'm always losing mine. Hey babe, have you seen my headphones? Hey babe, have you seen my headphones? I still can't find them anywhere. Well, I give up, I still can't find my headphones. As you can imagine, making this by hand would be somewhat difficult. So for this project, I used Creality's new 22 watt laser. Now, if you're not familiar with Creality, they're most known for their 3D printers, making one of the most popular on the market today. And with their quality and track record of making some innovative and great products, I really wanted to use this Falcon 2 on this build. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the laser in just a minute. For this headphone stand, I needed a design. And for this, I used a program called Aspire. Now, I've never designed a headphone stand before, so there's no guarantee that it would work correctly. Nonetheless, I still wanted to give it a shot. And once I got it designed the way I liked, it was time to get my material. Oh man, I love the smell of cedar. For this, I found a nice piece of red cedar that had just lying around the shop. With this particular design of the headphone stand, I just wanted the headphones to rest on them, so I didn't really want them to be spread apart. So I figured about a half inch thick and maybe three pieces of cedar would be perfect. Unfortunately, this material wasn't the right thickness. This is rough cut material, which is a lot cheaper, but I needed something to plane it down. And for that, I used this DeWalt planer, which I gotta be honest, is a huge savings in wood. So if you don't like to pay premium dollar and like hard wood, check out the planer that I have listed in the description. I held off a long time on buying a planer and I really wish I hadn't. It is so refreshing taking this off for the first time and just seeing the difference between the before and after of that wood. Whenever you buy a new laser, there's two things you really have to worry about. The first is focusing the laser, and you have to focus that laser based on the thickness of your material. Now, depending on the machine, that can be quite stressful. It comes with this nice little tool that you sit right on your material, and based on the thickness of your material, you just lower your laser down to that, and it will automatically be focused for you. I really like that. Now, the second thing you have to worry about is at what speed and what power you want to run this at. And that can be quite an arduous task trying to figure that out. Luckily, Creality has you covered with a spreadsheet that it comes with the laser that gives you some good starting points. This is a 22 watt laser module. And so I wasn't really sure what my feeds and speeds were gonna have to be. And so I tried it a few times. This one didn't cut all the way through. This one was the settings that they said would probably be good, burnt it to a crisp. And then I tried one that worked really good, which was 300 millimeters a minute, two passes. So you know what we're gonna do? 300 millimeters a minute, two passes, I think is perfect for this machine and this wood. So let's get started. I know I just said I did two passes, but I ended up doing a third pass on these. And there's a reason why wood does have some discrepancies in it, such as knots and other things that you might need to go over just one more time to make sure it cuts all the way through you don't have to worry about it not cutting through on the back side. Whenever you're cutting all the way through a material like I'm doing, there's two things that you really want. You need a honeycomb bed and you're also going to want some type of air assist. Now, I don't want to do the whole thing all in cedar. I want something to break up that contrast. And I settled on this three millimeter black acrylic that I picked up from Amazon. New material, new test. Luckily, Creality kind of gives an idea of what we might want here. They say about 100% power and 120 millimeters a minute, and between one to two passes depending on the thickness. I'm gonna go ahead and try one and see if that works. And if not, we'll go ahead and try again with two.
Now to connect the acrylic to the cedar might seem hard, but it's actually very easy. I'm just using some Loctite super glue and a couple clamps that I had hanging around. I didn't glue everything all at once. I wanted to make sure to do it in batches, and that was mainly to make sure that I could line everything up. Super glue does dry pretty fast in about a minute or so, so be careful. All right, so this is what we got going on so far. But what you'll notice is that when we put the headphones on there, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stay. This wants to lift back. Now, I could balance it maybe way back here. Cause that's more the midpoint. So that's like balancing it. I knew this ahead of time. I knew this wasn't gonna hold these and this isn't even sturdy enough anyway. So I'm going to have to build something and I'm not quite sure what to do, but I think I want to build it just a little bit further here um, out so that way it, it will kind of move the center of gravity forward. At least that's my thought. Could be wrong on that, but that's what my thought is. So I guess I got to go design something upstairs. Let's go ahead and check that out and see if it works. This is what I ended up coming up with, and it wasn't until after I cut it that I realized it looked sneakingly familiar. In fact, it looked kind of out of this world. I guess it's time to beam me up. One thing you will notice is that there is a rectangle that is engraved in this piece, and that's just to help line up the acrylic when I have that cut out. One of the things I really love about this laser is that the rear of the laser is actually open, which allows an escape point for the smoke. And that's especially going to help if you have this in an enclosure. I decided to spare you the gluing of the two pieces together. And now I'm just going to go ahead and screw some holes in there because that's how I'm going to fasten this to the base. And then you'll find out if it works. Honestly, I was very surprised it worked the first time, but I'm very happy that it did. Now let's just go ahead and time to finish it up and tell you my final thoughts on this laser and the project in general. Now I ended up finishing this with epoxy, which gives it a really bright, vibrant shine to it. And not everyone's gonna like this. You can definitely finish this with something else like Odie's oil or even something like general finishes. And that's it, the project is finished. And I gotta say, I'm actually surprised that I was able to pull this off as 
easily as I did, it worked out really well. And having that laser on hand was really neat. And I do want to say a little bit about the Creality Falcon 2. There are a lot of lasers nowadays, and this one is actually on pre-order right now. It's not even out. And here's my thoughts on it. This is a 22 watt laser. It is an excellent value. Here's the deal. Creality has the name already behind it. And it's one of those companies that you know isn't going to be going anywhere anytime soon. And that gives me a lot more faith when I buy a laser like this, especially when I put this much money into it. Now that this project is complete, thanks to Creality's Falcon 2, I go ahead and keep my headphones stand right over there with my headphones on them and I'll never... <sighs> Shoot. Hey babe, have you seen my headphones? <laughs>